y'all, this is Marley K. Hope y'all are well. Got a data point that I want to share with you. It came from Morning Money, but it comes from an economist. And this is um, the reason that I'm sharing it is because this is kind of uh, my vantage point, the way that I see things happening based on how long I've been watching things unfold since 2008. So the economist says this is going to be a lot worse than 2008. So if you remember 2008, things were really, really bad. And um, a lot of people lost jobs. In fact, I was working. I was laid off because they started a war. The money that was going into the nonprofit sector was redirected to war efforts, of course. Um, so they got to buy more bullets and got to buy more other stuff. So you can't get your money for your nonprofit organization. So we ended up, um, you know, laying off people. I, I was laid off um, and the organization closed and restructured itself. Um, I was on unemployment for a long time. I went back to my old job working at the college. But I just remember that time being really... Um, difficult. And I was trying to get a job in um, a different field. Nobody wanted to pay what they felt I was worth. Uh, and even and it lasted for a couple of years because I can remember when I first moved to Florida in 2012, 2013, I was looking for work. And you know, if you know anything about these tax, these income tax free states, uh, state income tax free states, they pay poor wages uh, unless you work in certain fields. And so if you're a professional, if you don't work in some cutthroat field, you don't get paid what you're worth. And so everywhere I went, you know, nobody wanted to pay me what I was worth. So it led to me starting my own business. And, you know, I ended up doing that. I still do that to this day. But it kind of just taught me that I can't rely on anybody else to feed me. And a lot of people don't understand that depending on what field you're in, you know, you, you may be in a career field where no matter what happens, you're, you're always going to be secure. But there are a lot of us who are not because we were sold dreams and lies. So, you know, with that said, um, things were difficult. Not, not necessarily for me at the time because I was married and my husband worked in a really good uh, field. He worked in healthcare, so he didn't have any issues initially. But things did shift for us because that is when um, 2010 Obamacare came out. So once that socialized medicine program was rolled out, a lot of doctors who were self-employed didn't want to be a part of the system. Rejected it, and so you saw this shift in healthcare happen. And at the time, I really didn't understand it. You know, you hear about people wanting to have insurance, you want everybody to have insurance and what the Affordable Care Act was supposed to do. But people didn't understand the private employer side of it and the mandates that came with it. So if you were poor and you didn't have any money, cool, it benefited you. But for people who didn't want it or people who were had their work hours decreased because their employer was forced to offer this and they dropped their good health care coverage and forced everybody to this socialized medicine, that was bad. And then you had a number of doctors who would have otherwise treated people and accepted government insurance if they weren't forced to do all this other stuff. And all the other stuff that came along with the Affordable Care Act was electronic health record systems. You had to have those. So it was the early digitalization of medicine and weeding out rebellion. I guess that's the best way to say it. So I'm saying all that to say that as this economy collapsed, you're going to see more and more changes. You're going to see more and more socialized programs come about. It's, it's probably going to be the time that they introduce the universal basic income, the extra food stamps, from my understanding, 
they're already sending out notices offering families who got the extra food stamps during the pandemic. They're offering those again, which is very suspicious to me because everybody's fine. Everybody's going to school. So it just makes me think that they're setting up in order to do this again. So I already told you they were closing down offices because of the Rona or whatever's going around. Well, now they're doing some, some more stuff. They are preparing for a collapse, but they're telling you everything is fine. And I don't want y'all to be caught off guard because, you know, the collapse is one thing. But what happens afterwards, all these safety nets and stimulus, this and, um, you know, promises that things are going to get better. They're going to help you. They're going to help you. The more help they give you, the more trouble you're going to be in later. So um, let's talk about this. So it says, noted expert Peter Schiff says the U.S. economy is on the verge of an economic collapse worse than 2008 and is warning investors to take immediate steps to protect themselves. In a gripping interview on Yahoo Finance, Schiff warns that while any moves the Fed makes could artificially bolster the economy, and that's what you have to have to always keep in the forefront of your mind that anything that they do, you know, I say every, every day is a day that nothing happens is a day that you have another day to prep. That's what that means. It means, you know, you just flying by the seat of your pants only by grace. We still have the opportunity to spend our little dollar and it's worth a dollar. Um, and bring investors false hope that things are turning around. The truth is that the government will only be delaying the day of reckoning. And I believe that. So I was looking at the Dow yesterday and it was up to like 35,000 points or whatever it was. And it was down. I, I don't even watch it anymore because I'm just not focused on that type of stuff. Um, but I noticed that it was high and I was thinking to myself, wow, all these things are happening. All these stores are closing. People are laying off all these restaurants need workers. Um, CVS is laying off. Amazon on laying off, Microsoft, uh, Facebook, everybody laying off, but the Dow is doing good. And so I was like, you know, this is the calm before the storm. I was watching this real estate guy. He was talking about how uh, over the last couple of years, people uh, were purchasing overpriced houses and those homes are sitting empty because people cannot afford to rent them because the rents are so expensive. So people are going to be upside down in mortgages. They're like, there are just so many things that resemble 2008, but are going to be worse because now, because of the real estate market, a lot of people are priced out of housing. Now it's going to flip, but um, a lot of people are going to lose those houses because they're not going to be able to afford them. And so the banks are going to be sitting on a bunch of assets, which is what BlackRock wants, because then they're going to give y'all y'all universal basic income and take some of that money from the government and use it to pay for the house that you're going to be living in. So you're not going to really have no freedom and you're going to have to do whatever they want y'all to do. Um, so the day of reckoning is coming and the people, the money people who have money are talking about it. But if you look at the news for regular old folks, they're not having these conversations at all. The Fed is ultimately, the Fed ultimately comes through with QE3. Um, it won't strengthen the economy, but it will weaken the dollar, Schiff said, noting that Bernanke's policies will eventually lead to a Greek style debilitating sovereign debt crisis where the dollar plunges and consumer prices and interest rates spike. And that's what I've been talking about for last year. Our, our collapse is going to be very much like Greece. It's probably going to be worse than Greece because our GDP is much bigger than Greece. And we have the global currency that everybody uses. So we got that thing going for us and um, people just aren't ready. Um, you see the banks, they have been messing with our money. We got, I'm sorry y'all, I'm having to plug up my computer because it's dying. We have um, 
high food prices. We have really high inflation. We have foreign companies buying up farmland and buying up businesses that process food. Um, we have war going on. It's just a lot of things going on that's going to lead to this day of reckoning that Greece did not have to worry about. So our issues are going to be far worse. So that's why I continue to put emphasis on preparing. We have a much bigger collapse coming, not just the markets, but of the economy. It's like what you're seeing in Europe right now, only worse, Schiff said. That's how I see things. I see things as as bad as bad can get. You, you read the Bible and talk about Babylon and the merchants crying because she fell in one day. That's, that's us. Schiff goes on to say that things will get truly ugly when it hits our fiscal cliff and have to slash government spending across the board. And this is what I want to place emphasis on. People on entitlements like Social Security and Medicare, they're not going to get the benefits they've been promised. Government workers are going to have to take pay cuts. Banks are going to fail. People are going to lose money. This is why I've been telling y'all, get your money out of the banks. Not just investors, but depositors. The housing market is going to fall again. So you're going to have a, a bunch of people who are going to lose their houses and you're going to have what happened in 2008, like in Detroit and a lot of these cities where people, you know, these plants closed, people could not afford their properties. They abandoned them or people had a bunch of um, investment properties and they got rid of them. And so that was extremely problematic, too, because it just left certain cities abandoned. And then, you know, sometimes that's that's the goal. They want certain areas. And so they um, they abandon those properties. Uh, people abandon them, you know, buyers, investors abandon them because they can't afford them. The, the people who have money swoop in and pay cash. And then the next thing you know, you have a totally different environment. Well, that's the goal because the people that have money are ready to develop these 15 minute cities, but they got to get the people out of the cities and out of these communities in order to develop them. So, again, it's a gradual demolition, but it's happening really fast. And Schiff isn't the only expert warning about the U.S. economy's dire predicament. A group of prominent scientists, economists, and geopolitical experts have uncovered an emerging pattern, one they believe could soon hasten an American economic catastrophe and a radical hit to the wealth and financial security of millions of Americans. If you're poor, you don't have nothing to worry about. Life going to be a little bit harder, but it ain't going to be too much harder because when you're at the bottom, you don't have too hard. You don't have too far to climb to get up off the floor. A large part of this has to do with the velocity of total credit market debt. It's part of a pattern of accelerating debt, and few have been able to track the speed of it, which is growing at a rate even faster than just a few months ago. Chris Martinson, a highly acclaimed scientist and an expert on exponential growth says the dangerous pattern of accelerating debt can go unnoticed at first. But what's happening underneath the radar is the speed of the doubling, which is now accelerating even faster to an unsustainable level. So when they talk about debt, you know, you if you don't keep up with the government's debt, it's like growing a couple trillion dollars a week. Like you we ain't gonna never be able to pay this money back. But we borrow money, we owe people. Um, people aren't working the way that they used to, so we don't have the tax revenue that we used to have. Well, that's what the government uses to pay its debts. So if the people are not working, where's the money coming from? They are printing it out of the sky. That's why everybody is trying to get away from using the dollar, because they know that it's just a matter of time before our Ponzi scheme catches up with us. So it says that's when chaos breaks out. Martinson says, as of today, the total credit market is 350% larger than the GDP. 
That represents an astounding $691,000 for a family of four in America. That means every family in America that has four people in that household owes in taxes $691,000 that we didn't we did not accrue. We don't have nothing to do with it. That don't include all your other stuff that you have to pay for. This is like federal government debt that we owe because we have birth certificates and social security numbers and licenses for this and passports, all these numbers that they use to leverage our bodies, minds, labor, soul to the world. Yet the doubling period for this gets shorter at an exponential rate that increases every day. It's a very dangerous exponential growth curve. And that, that's what I see. When you look at the debt and how fast the debt grows every day, every, every time you look around, the president is giving money for this war, giving money to this country, doing this, doing that. We don't have that money. But it doesn't matter that we don't have that money. They're printing the money. And they're saying, okay, we're gonna pass it off to us. Well, we ain't we can't barely make it now. We can barely buy milk. We can barely buy laundry detergent. Soap is expensive. Like everything is so expensive. So we are catching it. And pe most people are not really paying attention. They're still shopping at Amazon, buying stuff, buying hair weave and eyelashes, um, fingernails going out to eat dinner, taking trips, traveling all over the country, doing all kinds of stuff that is going to not matter in a couple of months. Yet the doubling period for this gets shorter at an exponential rate that increases every day. It's a very dangerous exponential growth, says Martinson, one that's setting us up for a situation worse than we've seen in Greece and across Europe. So I suggest you go back and look at the collapse of Greece a couple of years ago. I mean, it's about 10 years ago now. It was bad. You saw those people on TV, grown men at the ATM crying because they could not get their money out of the bank, because they could not get money out of the ATM machine, because they could not buy their wives uh, whatever they needed to buy for their health. They had six sick loved ones at home. The young people had to leave the country and go to Europe because they could not get jobs. The old people had to go back to work because they could not afford to stay home. Their retirement was either cut or it was eliminated altogether. If they got government pensions, those were yeeted. Look at what happened in Detroit. Look at, just look at the states that failed during that same time. But just look at the nations that have failed over the last 15 years um, and understand that's us, but whatever you saw, it's gonna be worse because it's us. So, Gird your loins and keep prepping. Every American needs to know what this means and what steps to take with your finances, investments, and day-to-day -day life to prepare for it, Martinson said. So um, they don't give you no advice, but I just wanted to share this with you. I've been telling you a few things to do, but again, you do your own research. I just want to share, share with you that there are people people who are out here telling the truth and then you have your government who is lying to you and they have been lying to us for a very long time if you are not preparing and if you have not put something back i i mean i strongly suggest you quit playing around and you get ready because these people are getting ready to run this place into the ground real fast and before you know it, you're going to go to bed one day, you're going to go to bed one Friday, you're going to wake up one Saturday, and you're going to live in a totally different country. Um, you may get an alert on your phone that says you are in a lockdown because of a national emergency that's been declared by the POTUS. We don't know what's going to happen, but I could tell you all these banking glitches, all these empty buildings and apartments you see going up and you're like why you know even in the little rural the little rural place that i live 
um, the county over, we hardly have any industry. It just, you know, the mall is gone. Crime is rising because they took away all the parks and recs so the young people didn't have nothing to do. Now they're all in the gangs and shooting up the mall and doing all kinds of stuff. And nobody wants to go any place because the people just are a mess. And they're building apartments and condos. It's like, who's come here to live in those things? This town don't have that many people. The county only have like 70,000 people. Um, maybe 20,000 live in the city limits. And the majority of the population are either really old and retired or, you know, figured out a way to make it or really young and not really doing much, kind of living a subsidized life so to speak, even if they work, um, it's kind of subsidized. So when you see these new apartments going up, it's like, who's going to live in those? What's happening? Um, and it's all on one side of town. And there's nothing over there except for the YMCA and some gas stations, a couple of grocery stores. There's no new industry coming to town. It's just really, it's really, 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 really weird. So things are happening all around us and we're not putting the pieces together because we kind of have a one track focus or we kind of like to focus on the things that we care about and we don't look at the total picture. It's time to start looking at the total picture. It's time to start looking at these large cities. Notice how they're going up in flames, either with high crime, <coughs> excuse me, literally going up in flames, or, um, you know, you have some other issues, bad politics, overrun with immigrants, illegal immigrants, something. Everything is happening for a reason. So it's going to be a lot worse for sure. Um, than what happened in Greece. But study Greece, study Europe, study all these nations that have fallen. America is a fairly young nation, which, you know, most Americans are so ignorant and egotistical. They don't really understand. We are a baby nation. We don't even, re we haven't even really been around long enough to, um, talk trash. We don't know nothing. So we're getting ready to go through our first huge collapse. We went through the Great Depression and we were able to overcome that. But what's coming, I don't know how many people are going to be able to overcome. And when that happens, it's just going to be the beginning. You know, it doesn't have anything to do with war or grid down or um, any of those other things that we are encountering. UFOs, a UFO invasion. Oh, it's so tiring. But anyway, keep prepping. Keep praying. Continue to seek the Most High for wisdom and guidance on how to navigate life during these crazy times. Pray for your brothers and sisters. We got a lot of people who are not awakened, and we have people who are awakened but um this are disobedient and taken for granted the times that we are living in continue to um, pray for our brothers and sisters across the diaspora and pray for Israel scattered all over the world because we are getting ready to really have a difficult time. Um, we're going to be blamed for everything, so we might as well get ready. And Esau going to come after all of us one more time. That's the plan. If you already know what time it is, you don't have to get ready. Please like this video, share it, and subscribe to the channel if you like this type of content. Please hit that bell notification so that you will be notified every time I make a new upload. Please try to get as much information as you can because once this internet goes down and is scrubbed, it will never be the same again. Follow me on social media. Links are in the description. In the event that this channel goes down, I will send out a SOS white flag on Instagram or Facebook. Also, consider following me on Rumble and Odyssey in the event that Google 
kicks us off of this platform, off of YouTube for whatever disinformation, not liking us, being black, whatever, uh, telling the truth. Uh, if I'm able to, I will continue to post on Rumble and on Odyssey. If not, I will be gone. I will not be back. So enjoy me while you can. Because when I'm gone, I'm out of here. Other than that, y'all, take it easy. This is a data point. It's an important data point. Use it in concert with everything else that we talk about on this channel and everything else you get from all the other people that you follow who are awakened. And do what you need to do to prepare for what's coming. Because when it comes... It's going to come suddenly and it's going to catch a lot of people off guard, unaware. So make sure that you understand you are responsible for you. There is not going to be a cavalry coming to save you. And if they do come, trust me, you are not going to want their help. All right, y'all. This is Marty Kay. Love y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. And I'm out.